Hi, uh, this is Carlton here, having a chat about old rum for Birmingham Live. Many places have got a novelist associated with them. Dickens for London. Arnold Bennett for Stoke and Trent and the Potteries. What about Brum? Well, we haven't got an author who's written about our city intimately, but we have got a number of world-famous writers who are deeply connected with Brummagem itself. For example, there was Conan Doyle, the man who thrilled the nation to the exploits of Sherlock Holmes and who coined a new phrase, elementary, my dear Watson. Conan Doyle wasn't the only world-famous author associated with Birmingham. Did you know that Rip Van Winkle, that tale of a man who fell asleep and came back to consciousness years later, well, that tale was actually written in Birmingham by Washington Irving when he was visiting his family, the Van Warts, who had an house in Ockley. But Birmingham has got one of its own sons, who is a celebrated and well-known author. The man is J.R.R. Tolkien. He was born in 1892 in South Africa, the son of a brummy mum and dad. When he was three, his mother came home to see her parents, and while she was back in Birmingham, his dad sadly died. There was no point in the family going back to South Africa, and so the Tolkien's grew up here in the village of Serol, really more of an hamlet in Holbrook. Tolkien is renowned for two great and superb novels. There's The Lord of the Rings, an epic saga set in the mythical world of Middle-earth, peopled by strange yet wonderful beings like orcs, hobbits and elves. And then there's The Hobbit, a smaller book, yet it's the best-selling work of fiction in the 20th century. And both books filled with resonances of the Birmingham in which Tolkien grew up, and particularly of the village of Serhol. No more is this more clear than in references to Serhol Mill itself. To the end of his days, Bilbo could never remember how he found himself outside, without an hat, a walking stick, or any money, or anything that he usually took with him when he went out leaving his second breakfast half and finished and quite unwashed up, pushing his keys into Gandalf's hands and running as fast as his furry feet could take him, past the Great Mill, across the water and then on for a mile or more. Serol Mill was powered by two pools, one of which was next to the building itself. The other was further away, more isolated and secluded, it was surrounded by trees and vegetation. It had a stream running nearby. It was a magical mystery land. Perhaps it was the inspiration for Tolkien's idea of the old forest in the Lord of the Rings itself. But the forest is queer. Everything in it is very much more alive, more aware of what is going on, so to speak, than things are in the Shire. And the trees do not like strangers. They watch you. They are usually content merely to watch you, as long as daylight lasts and don't do much. Occasionally, the most unfriendly ones may drop a branch or stick a root out or grasp at you with a long trailer. But at night, things can be most alarming or so untold. I have only once or twice been in here after dark, and then only near the hedge. I thought all the trees were whispering to each other, passing news and plots along in an unintelligible language, and the branches swayed and groped without any wind. They do say the trees do actually move and can surround strangers and hem them in. The Tolkien's lived in a number of parts of Birmingham, moving from Serol to Moseley and King's Heath, ending up in Stirling Road, Edgbaston, close to Parrot's Folly and the Tower of the Waterworks company behind it. Were these the ideas behind the two towers in the Lord of the Rings? Carl Chin, the Birmingham Live.